Recently I have shared the story how the Alter Rebbe, the Baratani, admonished his son Rebdoivber, the Mittler Rebbe, for not having heard the cry of his little baby that fell out from the crib while he was so deeply immersed in his learning. And the Alter Rebbe said that it's inconceivable that the study of Torah should block you from hearing a child's cry. And we explained the Rebbe expounds on this in telling us the importance of hearing the cry of every child, the spiritual cry of every child, just like the physical cry of every child. And when we're talking about a child, especially when we're talking spiritually, there could be an adult who is literally really an infant in knowledge and experience of Judaism. We must hear that cry because the soul cries out. I want to share two little anecdotes, stories, that emphasizes the sensitivity to exactly this concept. I recently heard the story about Rabbi Cheskel Abramsky, one of the great Rosh Hashivas in our generation, great G'doy Hador, tremendous big scholar, Rosh Hashiva. After moving from England to Eretz Yisrael, apparently he was walking with a colleague of his, with another great Talmud Chachem, and obviously, two great scholars walk in the street. They don't discuss the weather. They discuss subjects of their learning. So while they're, while they're involved in this discussion, suddenly Rabbi Cheskel Abramsky stops. Because he noticed there's a little girl, young little child, sitting at the edge of the street and crying. Rabbi Cheskel Abramsky excused himself from his colleague and went over to the little girl and asked her, why are you crying? And she tells him, sobbing, my best friend told me that her dress is nicer than my dress. And this poor little child is devastated. This great Rosh Hashiva could have just walked a foolish little child. While bent down to this child, he tells her, look, this, go home, tell your mommy that a rov by the name of Yecheskel Abramsky said that you should tell your mother that you are the most beautiful little girl in the whole neighborhood and that you have the most magnificent beautiful dress from the entire area. Please make sure you tell this to your mother, but in the name of Yechesk Labramsky. Now, this little child, her life, her day changed, became the most excited girl, running home, in great enthusiasm. The Rebbe, as you know, or you might know, would hold on Shabbos Fabrengen. Fabrengen is a gathering where he speaks for hours on end on all topics of Torah, from the parish of the week to Allah, to Chassidus, to Mamborim, to Kabbalah, to Pirkovis, whatever it was, was touched upon. These were hours of intense expounding of Torah subjects with thousands of Chassidim following, being present. And then this would be recorded, and then this would be edited, and hundreds of thousands of people would study these Fabrengens. One particular Shabbos that everybody expected that at 1.30 it will be announced that the Rebbe will come down to Fabrengen on Shabbos, suddenly was announced there is no Fabrengen. People were wondering why. Because that was a Shabbos that usually would, the Rebbe would have his Fabrengen. And the reason was as follows. There was a child who was not the most prominent child in class. Let's put it this way. That particular Shabbos was this child's bar mitzvah celebration. And apparently the mother had told the Rebbe that this child is having social issues. He's not one of those kids that everybody comes and wants to be his friend. And the Rebbe said that he will not verbring this Shabbos 
so as not to disturb the Bar Mitzvah celebration of this child. Because celebration Bar Mitzvah starts after the services, 12, 1 o'clock. The Fabrengen would around, start around 1.30. So once there is a Fabrengen, nobody stays at the celebration. Everybody would run away and this poor child would be left there all alone. So the Rebbe deemed more important for this child that the guest should stay at his Bar Mitzvah then he should teach, reveal more aspects of Torah. That's the sensitivity of the cry of the child. We are your children. We are crying out to you. Please, bring us to the Simcha, bring us to the celebration, the Geula celebration. As important as a Bar Mitzvah celebration. Now, please.